What's up guys, my name is White Grim Reaper and today I'm doing a relatively short video and I'm just going to talk about Anima Islands, why you should do it, and a quick guide to doing it solo since finding somebody else to do most minigames with kind of sucks nowadays. So, Anima Islands, where is it on the map, first of all? It's here at Tuska's Corpse. So if you have Bandit Camp Lodestone from, I believe, Desert Treasure, you can just TP to that. Otherwise, I believe there's a Fairy Stone somewhere around here. Easiest one, is to, one to do is just teleport to Bandit Camp, and then there you go. Once you're here, up there is a uh, teleport to something else, but all you have to do is come over and pass through this barrier to start the minigame. So, why would you do this minigame? Well, I mean, I, why would you do any minigame nowadays? Well, the main one, the main reason for this is the rewards. So specifically, there's, I mean, there's some armor. I don't know if this matters. I don't know if anybody cares about this. There's some weapons. I don't know if anybody cares about any of this. Um, there's some emotes and some XP lamps and stuff. I don't think anybody cares about that. The main reason that we do this mini game is for these, these abilities, specifically Devotion and Tuska's Wrath are two really important PVM abilities. Specifically, Devotion is really important, especially for the Arch Glacier which just came out recently. So that's why I'm here. That's why I'm doing it. I thought I'd make a quick video to uh, share some knowledge with everybody else since I wasn't, as you can tell by my 386 in the reward shop, I wasn't able to finish it complete on my own the first time. So each game takes exactly 20 minutes. First thing you do is you enter the barrier. Obviously, if you want other people to go with you, they'll enter with you, but you enter the barrier and wait a little bit before the game starts. As soon as it starts, you have exactly 20 minutes split into four sections of five. So this first section that I got is the tree section. What you want to do here, if you're soloing, all you got to do is chop down the vines. When you chop down the vines, you'll see you get this mysterious herb. And clicking on the mysterious herb will make you crush it. All you have to do, chop the vines, crush the herbs, feed them to the roots. And then once those roots will trace their way towards these little saplings once these saplings sprout then you grab the uh the seed of power from them and return it to the tree that's all it is so chop that down and we'll crush it and we'll go nurture this root each one you can see it build slowly piece by piece this is automatic you don't need to worry about it at all you just click keep clicking on them as long as you have herbs nurture root and then there you go. Collect seed. So you collect the seed, return it to the tree, and there you go. There's your 7%. So you got to do that, I think, four times total to uh, finish this minigame. This one's not too difficult. Pretty easy. Just go in, chop, crush, feed. All you need to do. Interestingly enough, I think the, the spawns of these roots changes a lot uh this particular time there's a lot more of the of these vines also it's good to try and figure out what uh which root will be the easiest for you to get see i could tell that that one was a pretty short one and i can tell that this is a shorter one than this so i'm just going to chop down these vines and get this one first because i think it's going to take me less time as long as you're not too bad at your time management and you're pretty much actively clicking all the time and working on stuff, you should be more than fine to complete this within the time limit. As you can see as well, every time we finish a tree, finish one of these saplings into a tree and get a seed, you can see that that sapling then creates another root to a, no a new sapling. So we can see here, I'm going to feed this in, and then this one is now complete. And you can see it has this nurture root to this one here. So this sapling was created. That's where this root will lead. So we're just going to grab some more. We're actually going to do that one again because it's pretty short. Let's see, we're already at 15%. We've got two done. And we're just going to do exactly what we were doing before. Chop them down. Feed the seeds, or feed the, the herb. Till it grows.
I do. Okay, I've never had that happen before. Interesting. Interesting mechanism. It looks like that seed is actually unusable in that state. That's a little interesting. That may actually screw us over from getting 100% completion. We'll do our best, though. It's interesting. There's a lot of, uh, there seems to be a lot of RNG involved in this particular minigame, uh, specifically when it comes to these vines popping up. Like, you can see this time I'm running through, there's a lot of these vines. I mean, they're popping up often. Uh, other times, there won't be many, if any, at all. Uh, so it's, I think it's really just dependent on your RNG. It's dependent on your luck. Um, as we can see this time, I got a pretty bad set. I want to say. I think I still should be... Oh, no, I've gotten... See, there we go. So, three done, and I've gotten all of my anima from this island. We're almost done. I'm going to keep doing this, but I'll probably speed through this when we get to the... Uh, when I do the actual video. But yeah, so once you're done with each mini game, as I should be in a second here... flies away like that, you jump off, and then the next minigame shows up. In this case, this is the most boring, honestly the worst minigame, where basically you find whichever runestone is glowing, click on it, and once it's done glowing, you go clockwise around to the next stone that's glowing. So in this case, you jump, click on this gate stone, clicking on this will send you to the next one. Unfortunately, you can only go clockwise, you can't go counterclockwise. Then you cross with the next crystal. Each one of these gives you a different type of XP, but it's not really significant enough to matter. Then charge this runestone. And you keep doing this for five minutes, because sometimes it can take a while to jump between the two and you only get a little bit of charge per runestone. And a lot of times it'll do that, where it'll teleport behind me, but I can't cross back. So instead, I run around in circles. So yeah, that's effectively all there is to this particular minigame. It's pretty simple, pretty self-explanatory. There is an added uh, function when you're playing it with other people, but I have not played it with other people, so I can't really make a guide on it. Plus, this is kind of supposed to be a uh, solo guide. And there we go. So we're done with all of our anima from this island, and we're just going to wait to uh, hop to the next one. Should be transferring over in a second. There we go. All right, which one do we got next? All right, so next up is this one. So this is a, also a pretty simple one. All you got to do, at least as a solo, is what you do is you go over to this holy fire, click on it to take some, and run over to these tentacles and start swinging. That's pretty much all you need to do. Once enough tentacles pop up, you want to place yourself so the tentacle you click on is in a square of tentacles because you hit in a 3x3 three three AoE centered right in front of you. As you can see, it's hitting right here. So ideally, you want to hit as many tentacles as you can at a time. Oftentimes, the best spot is like here, or often here, if there's one spawning over here. Um, you can be... Uh, pretty imprecise about it and it still works pretty well another good thing to have is surge or even double surge if you can um basically you hit these keep swinging they'll respawn pretty quickly keep swinging until you run out surge back pick up some more surge back over and then there you go and that's pretty much all there is to this mini game as a solo i am have no idea what the altar and the graves are down here um, it's not really necessary. All you need is this to do this minigame solo. Surge over, get some fire, surge back. Start burning here. 
And as you can see, this one's maybe a little slow to start depending on where you're swinging, but eventually these tentacles will uh, respawn pretty quickly. There's not really too much issue when it comes to finishing this one on time as long as you're paying attention. You don't need surge. You certainly don't need double surge. Um, it just makes it a little faster and it's fun to do. So yeah, if, you, if there isn't another one that's spawned where you were swinging, just kind of find someone, find one that's relatively close and just keep going. It's not, none of these mini games, as long as you're paying attention, have too tight of a uh, tolerance on how, you, how well you need to do to solo them. So yeah, this um, this whole section is basically dedicated exclusively to, exclusively to this. You grab some fire, swing the fire at some tentacles until they die, and then you grab some more fire as soon as your fire's out. I would definitely, as soon as there's a good number of tentacles out, make sure you are swinging at as many tentacles as you can at a time. Um, for example, like right now, okay, I can go back to where I was, but if, if you can't go back to exactly what you were swinging at before, try to get as close as you can, because you don't want to waste, like, those ones were pretty close to death, now I'm going to switch to here, just because I don't want to waste time swinging at almost nothing. See, we're at almost at 70%, so we're almost there. As you can see as well there, if you're swinging at a tentacle and it dies, you can continue swinging at that same tentacle after it's dead, as long as you don't re-click. As you can see, we're getting there. We're almost done, 74%. In fact, we should complete it with this current fire and there we go so i'm gonna give it another minute or two and then i will see you for the last one all right so while i'm about to switch here i would like to reiterate that if you're watching this as a video you should definitely watch through the whole video um these are in any randomized order so the order of these four islands is random um i'll have to put a warning at the beginning of the video but uh here we are going on to the last one and as a solo, actually, all you need to do for this one is building these shattered pylons. When I originally first started doing this, I would attack. Um, there's little lightnings that pop up that you can attack. It's actually significantly slower, I believe, to attack these and try to charge the core with them. All you need to do, build these pylons. I suggest building two, specifically. So build these pylons. So once you're done building this pylon... This one will have charged a little, or actually a, a large ball of lightning. You can see it's it's charging up. It's, you know, bringing its, its sentient lightning towards it. So as soon as you've got this built, it should pop up here. And you want to click lure on the sentient lightning to get him to follow you. And click just on the other side of the core so that it ends up next to the core. As soon as it does, you'll see it charge up and just click on the core and boom. You can see I've already got 6% built up. So then I'm just going to keep doing that. You don't have to do the same pylons or anything like that. doesn't matter if these don't despawn quickly enough where you have to worry about it. Just go, build your pylon. Gets you a solid amount of construction experience. Not a ton, but, you know, cheaper than normal construction. Then as soon as that one's there, lure, walk over, wait for it to follow, and then charge. That's all you need to do for this uh, this particular mini-game. Pretty simple. Pretty self-explanatory, really. The only, the only unusual thing is that if you're doing this solo, I would not recommend attacking the lightning. Just build these. Um, it's really way easier to just build these. Um, you don't... As you can see, I'm wearing Virtus at the moment. Um, if you're wearing... Like, if you're higher level and you have gear that has charge, then you're not wasting your gear charge. It's just kind of a better idea, generally, to uh, 
do this mini game without attacking these lightning. As you can see, we're at 90% and we're barely halfway through this time. So this is definitely a pretty time efficient way of doing it as well. Though, as you'll see, I'll end up with quite a bit of, uh, of extra time here once I'm done. And that's just about all there is to this minigame. I'm going to speed up from here because I don't have too much else to say. Bring it in and we are fully charged. All the animal we need. So that's it. I'm going to scoot forward a little bit here just so we skip this boring little last minute. All right, and we should be just about done. I see the timer's almost there. And there we go, and that's it. So all you get is a great job. I hope you managed to get some anima. And if I go back to Wizard Chambers, look at this reward shop, we can see I have exactly 1,000 reward currency more than I had previously. So the way the rewards work in this minigame is for every 1% of charge you get, you get 10 reward currency. That is broken down into percentages you can't see. As you can see, I have 200, or 386 on top. So that is broken down smaller, but effectively, if you get 100%, you get 1,000. So it should take you four runs to get each one of these abilities. It should take you seven total to get something like Sacrifice and Devotion. In total, all I would recommend for this game, I'm not sure if, the, if these armors matter at all. I've never seen anybody wearing them. These overrides, if you like them, sure, get them. All you're really looking for from this particular, uh, from these particular mini games is these abilities, specifically Devotion first, Tuska's Wrath second, Sacrifice third. I'm not sure if Transfigure is any good, but if you want it, you can get it. And I guess Tuska's Storm Teleport is something you could get if you want. It's only 1.2k, so I'll probably spend that extra 386 on that. But that's pretty much it. That's a quick single solo player guide to Anima Islands. Um, that's about all I have to say on it. Uh, I hope you guys have fun with uh, running this a couple times. It takes 20 minutes per run, so it can feel like you're taking a long time, but it's really not too bad, especially compared to the other ways of getting sacrifice and devotion. So thank you for watching. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe. Also, follow me and subscribe to me on Twitch. My Twitch is White Grim Reaper with an underscore. I'll have a link to it in the description, and I'll probably be showing it now. Other than that, thanks for watching. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and I will see you sometime. <laughs>